Hi, welcome back. This is GCSE Poetry with Dr. Jane for Langdon Park School. This is the creative writing unit. We're trying to approach seen and unseen poetry in creative ways to help us feel more confident about reading poetry, thinking about poetry, approaching poetry, personally responding to poetry in analytic and creative ways, and then we'll move on to revising poems and getting into more technical analytic writing. Today we're going to look at John Agard, and with Agard um, we're going to look at um, his use of dialect and voice, and how non-standard English is deployed by Agard to, to show some of his ideas um, and emotions about uh, what he's, what he, what, how he perceives conflict. Um, but I'm also going to look at, because it's very difficult um, to voice his poem and not sound inauthentic, and I'm going to do it anyway um, when I'm analyzing it, and I will also link to a video. But I'm all, to do to balance that out. I'm going to look at one by uh, uh, Daljit Nagra uh, called Sing Song, and I will look at his Hinglish as well, and I will link to that too. Okay, to start. Oops, I want you to look at these images, and I should say that if you don't know who these people are, you might want to pause your video. And go to Google and look up some of these people. And I'm wondering how you could use Google to figure out who someone is without knowing their name. Um, and I'm wondering as well why we all don't know more um, uh, black British uh, writers and performers and historical figures and athletes. Why we don't know their names. I, I'm just wondering. Or, or the context with which you're looking at. But putting that aside... Which of these images is the most British image? And which is the least British image? Um, if you could just pause and pick one and justify your answer. And if you could write that down as a sentence. Okay, so you've looked at these images now. I want you to think about this question. What does it mean to be considered part of British culture, language, art, and values in your education? Is our schooling in your opinion, inherently racist or narrow in the way it treats other cultures. For you, how do you feel other cultures are treated within the British culture, within your schooling? This is something that the poem speaks directly towards, and I want you to have an opinion about. So if you could pause, think about, if you were with someone, you could speak, and I'd like you to write down your opinion of that right now. Okay. So we've started and we're starting to think about John Agard and his use of dialect, um, that is non-standard uh, English. And we're going we're gonna to try and use uh, reading out loud as a way of really trying to understand what he's doing in the poem. The poem is checking out my history. It's on page 54. Before I read it and go through it, I invite you to pause this video and read it for yourself at least twice. You should read it out loud if you really want to get a sense of what he's going for. And you shouldn't be afraid or ashamed or uh, feel silly. Um, try and have some fun with reading it out loud and on your own. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an up on this poem. Uh, structurally, this is what it's about. Uh, he feels, the character speaking feels, that education is blinding him to who he is. And he's forced to learn about some things. And he wishes he could learn about other things. And he names four um, historical figures, Toussaint L'Ouverture, Nanny de Maroon, Shaka the Zulu, and Mary Seacole. Now, I could tell you a lot. Now, people, when they read this poem, they just do a ton of context on those four figures. I'm actually more interested in this poem as a poem. So if you want to know more about those figures, I strongly suggest you write their names down and go do some research. Um, and I'm wondering, my question there would be, is knowing who they are, going to help you understand this poem more. Um, what the speaker realizes in the end is finding, he's figuring out who he is. In terms of language, what you'll notice is the idea of blinding and bandaging, like covering up, light and healing. You'll notice this, th this non-standard dialect throughout where the, the character speaks in his own voice, in his own language, and not in his own language, it's the English language, but it's the language from where he emerges from. He uses rhyme really selectively and in interesting ways. And his tone is um, sarca sarcastic, but also there's a sense of anger 
at play and present here as well. So we're going to look at, it's on page 54, and the poem's called Checking Out My History. Again, I invite you to pause and try and read the poem on your own first before you read it with me. So, so you've read the poem once, at least, hopefully out loud. Hopefully you've started to figure out how to annotate, how to respond, how to underline things you think are important or, or that, that, that means something to you. On the previous uh, slide, I showed you some, um, some ways that you could approach a structure. Now let's try and read this poem. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it at that angle, I think. Okay, so this is intimidating for me too, to read a poem blank and to read it in dialect when I'm out of my dialect, but I'm going to try. Dem tell me, dem tell me, dem tell me what, dem tell, what, <sighs> dem tell me, dem tell me, what dem want to tell me. Bandage up me eye with me own history. Blind me to me own identity. So bandage and blind. Bandages are usually for healing. And here he's saying education. But actually what it's doing is, is so he can't see. Um, and they tell me what they want to tell me. It's, it's someone else's desire. Dem tell me about 1066 and all dat. Dem tell me about Dick Whittington and he cat. But Toussaint Louverture, no. Dem never tell me about dat. This, this rhyme is a mockery, 1066, the last time the English were invaded. Dick Whittington, um, a panto figure. But who is this character, this heroic black general? Who is he? Um, he gets honor of place, indented, in italics, and we are told his story. Toussaint, a slave with vision. He was a slave. He could see. Lick back Napoleon Battalion and first black republic born. Toussaint, de torn in de French. Toussaint, de beacon of de Haitian revolution. That image is amazing. Thorn in the side. He 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 licked back. He he pushed back the gr one of the greatest generals in history. One of greatest generals, and you know his name. But you don't maybe know this black general who pushed him back, and he was a beacon, a light. So he has vision and he's a light and he was key to the Haitian revolution. And the constant lick back Napoleon battalion, first black republic born, Doucet de Torn, the, the rhythm and the rhyme is, is, is more celebration and power as opposed to this sarcastic boredom and banality of what he is forced to learn about in school. Dem tell me about the man who discovered the balloon and a cow who jump over the moon. Dem tell me about the dish ran away with the spoon, but dem never tell me about Nanny de Maroon. So white discoveries. We have uh, nursery rhymes you're taught. But you're not taught about this character, Nanny de Maroon. Who is Nanny? <coughs> Nanny, a seafar woman of mountain dream, fire woman struggle, hopeful stream to freedom river. So she seems, again, someone able to see, a visionary, a leader, struggle, fighter. Now, I, I, I invite you to go look up and find out more about her, but I, I challenge you to ask this question. Does knowing the context actually um, help you understand? Because I know from the language itself and the sounds 
that she's important, that she's meaningful to him, and how much he loathes, let's say, them tell me about Lord Nelson and Waterloo. That's where Napoleon was actually defeated. I never noticed that in this poem. But them never tell me about Shaka, the great Zulu. Them tell me about Columbus in 1492. But what happened to the Caribs and the Arawaks too? So what you hear about is European battles. But what about African heroes? Um, what you hear about is Columbus's discovery. But what, what you don't hear about is the genocide of European colonialism on the indigenous people of the New World. And, you know, he's annoyed and he's angry and he's, he's full of mockery. And you can tell from his rhymes and what he chooses to make fun of. Them tell me about Florence Nightingale and she lamp and how Robin Hood used to camp. Them tell me about old King Cole was a merry old soul. But them never tell me about Mary C. Cole. So you hear about her, but who is that? My daughter knows about her from school. Now things have changed from horrible histories. Things have changed. Who is this woman? From Jamaica, she traveled far to the Crimean War. She volunteered to go, and even when the British said, nah, she still braved the Russian snow. Oh, I did that wrong. And even when the, the, the British say no, said no, she still braved the Russian snow, a healing star among the wounded, a yellow sunrise to the dying. Light. Health. She's a nurse. The Crimean War, Battle of the Light Brigade, if you want to think about that. Um, uh, from Jamaica, so uh, a black nurse who came to the Crimean War to volunteer, even though she was told no. Um, and she was a healing star among the wounded, a yellow sunrise. So again, we see this imagery. We hear, we hear the reverence. We see it indented and italicized, though I don't care about that as much as the sounds and the imagery that show me how much this speaker is moved and inspired by Mary Seacole. Dem tell me, dem tell me what dem want to tell me. But now, as a result of all this, I'm checking out I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not passive. I'm the actor. I'm not passive. And what I'm doing is I'm carving out me identity. From this, I'm, I'm determining who I am, who I can be. Um, I think it's a really fun and amazing poem. And I think the language is exciting, even though my brutalizing of it and with my language, you're going to have to please forgive me. But of course, you can really hear the anger, the sarcasm, um, and, and you can see the imagery of darkness and blindness to inspiration and light. And that's really powerful in the poem. So what we do now after having read the poem a few times and hopefully you've read it on your own and if you haven't having read it with me you, could you read it on your own again if you want to do more work there'll be a video at the end that you can link to to look at some more of my annotations could you now take a moment and take some of your the lines you think are important some of the images some of the ideas and could you respond to them in five to seven minutes and we're just doing the same process so that you take ownership of the poem. Okay, so you've read Checking Out My History a few times. You uh, Hopefully you have something to say about dialect and how, how Agard uses language and dialect to, to show his annoyance and his conflict with the way the education system works. Now, we're going to look at dialect in another way in another poem. And to start that off, I just want you to look at these pictures and describe what you see. Um, uh, what's the story behind the pictures? What are the people doing, thinking, and wanting? How do they want to be seen? Okay, so on the left we see um, a party scene. A guy with his amazing shirt and trousers is really getting down and showing how low he can go. Um, the flash has given us some light in the darkness. Everyone seems to be having an amazing time. Um, the one in the middle are 
uh, looks like two teenagers to me. I don't think they're actually angry. I think they're posing. I think this picture is really funny because you can see that they're posing and trying to show how threatening they are. Um, I think the one on the right's really um, sweet. I see a real level of um, intimacy and uh, uh, sweet uh, care and love here without touching um, and innocence by not making eye contact. I think there's a beautiful silhouette there um, made. Um, here are some more images now. We'll go to South Asia. Um, what for you are South Asian stereotypes in English culture? What stereotypes actually reflect reality? What stereotypes are unfair and place limits on people? How is love of different cultures shown in our media, literature, and art? In these images, what are expected images and what images surprise you? So again, if you could take a moment and just pause and just look at these images and think about what do we expect of British Asian culture? What are the stereotypes and how do these images play with or against those stereotypes? Okay, great. Now we're going to look at a poem called Sing Song by the poet Daljit Nagra. And it's on the spec, but in the relationships and love portion. And it's a love poem and it uses dialect again. And it uses dialect in a different way. And I want you to think about when we're reading the poem, and I want you to be able to do the structural and the language analysis on your own. What I want you to think about um, is, and this is on page 52, <clears throat> Try reading the poem for yourself first. And I want you to think about how is dialect used in similar or different ways to Agard. Okay? Try reading the poem for yourself once at least. Get all the way through. It's two pages. And then I'm going to read it with you. Okay? Sing song. I just, I run just one of my daddy's shops from nine o'clock to nine o'clock and he want me not to have a break but when nobody in, I do the lock cause up the stairs is my newly bride we share in chapati, we share in the chutney after we have made love like we rowing through putney whoa that's surprising this corner shop, we know that we know, we know that stereotype, but what we don't know is, or what, what I'm less familiar with, what I think is hilarious, is that uh, he sneaks out, locks the door, and he shares and food, of course, but he actually makes love to his new wife. When I return with my penny untied, the shoppers always point and cry, Hey, Singh, where have you been? Your lemons are limes, your plantains are bananas are plantain, this dirty little floor need a little bit of a mop, in the worst Indian shop on the whole Indian road. He's not doing, he is not doing his job properly. But is there anger? No. It's comic, but it's not angry. There's a kind of joyful, um, you know, when you're in love and you just forget about everything else. That's what I see in this poem. Above me head, Above my head, high heel tap the ground, as my wife on the web is playing with the mouse. When she netting to cat on her seek lover side, she booked them for the meat and the cheese of her prize. Okay, so she is a modern woman, and she runs a website for seek lovers. Singh is the name of uh, a typical uh, Sikh surname. So I think the pun here is Singh Song. It is, of course. And uh, once she makes the money, she, she makes the meat and the cheese. She's making the big money on her website. Now you'll see how modern she is. My bride, she effing at my mom in all the colors of Punjabi. Then stumble like a drunk, making fun of my daddy. Whoa, so swearing at mom. Mocking dad. Oh gosh. Maybe not the best. Oops. My bride, tiny eyes of a gun. 
and the tummy of a teddy. Wow, what an image. What an image. <laughs> My bride, she have a red crew cut. She wear a tartan sari, a donkey jacket and some pumps on the squeak of the girls that are pinching my sweeties. <laughs> on the squeak of the girls that, that are pinching my sweeties. I don't understand what that is. Are the, are the shoes pinching her feet? I don't know. I really like the repetition and it's worth thinking about how different the repetition is here than in um, um, checking out my history. When I return from the tickle of my bride, oh gosh, he calls it a tickle, this lovemaking. The shoppers always point and cry, hey Singh, where have you been? The milk is out of date and the bread is already stale. The things you have on offer, you have never got in stock in the worst Indian shop in the whole Indian road. So he's really neglecting his work. But look, he's in love, guys. Look, late in the midnight hour, when you shoppers are wrapped up quiet, when the precinct is concrete cool, we come down whispering stairs, sit on my silver stool. From behind the chocolate bars, we stare past the half-price window signs and the beaches of the UK in the blighty moon. So here, I think they're trying to get some privacy. Um, Blighty, I think, is what the pun, the mistakes are really funny. Um, th this romantic moment, this romantic scene from the stool each night, she say, how much do you charge for that moon, baby? From the stool each night, I say, is half the cost of you, baby. From the stool each night, she say, how much does that come to, baby? From the stool each night, I say, is priceless, baby. This is a romantic poem that plays against stereotypes, plays against and with stereotypes. And it's silly and it's fun. And Daljit Nagra has a lot of play with the dialect and in for very different reasons than um, uh, uh, Agard does. And I'd like you to to access that and play with that and just look at the poem and see what you can do with it. Oops. <coughs> so what we've been doing today. Now, if we were in lesson, what I'd be inviting you to do is uh, translate one of these poems into your own dialect uh, kind of response. Um, uh, but but since we're at home, what I'm wanting you to do is to just discover that dialect is another way of conveying meaning. And it's not only anger and mockery. As we see, it can be romance and fun and comedy as well. Um, we've, we've thought about um, how to approach a poem. Um, we've thought about dialect. We've, we've read two poems in dialect. And now what I want you to think about is um, go back to this idea of Agard's response. How does Agard use dialect to present his ideas about British education? I invite you to read more of his poetry and to think, see how he uses dialect in, the, in those other poems, and Daljit Nagra's poetry for that matter. Um, how does learning about different voices and perspectives make you think about your identity in different ways? I think about, I feel close to this Hinglish um, based on my cultural background, but for you, how, how can a poet, a modern poet, use dialect to convey different or similar um, meaning just through the language. Um, and, and what else can you, what other emotions do you think you can get away with? Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to link you to both a longer annotation of Sing Song and Checking Out My History, which I've done a long time ago. I hope that you've been able to respond to both poems in a personal way and have something to say and have annotated those poems. I hope that you can start to think about your own creative responses to them. And I hope that you're getting on with this unit and realizing that you're reading quite a lot of poetry and your poetry skill and your understanding and your repertoire of approaches to a poem are growing with every lesson. Okay, I look forward to uh, seeing you all very soon. Thanks.